Hey guys, welcome to chapter 7 math, all about the human population. Our first section is going to be preparing to do the math global and national population growth rates. So we talked about this a couple times in class and um, the differences between global population growth rate and national population growth rate. So let's go through this together. Let's highlight some important information. Let's circle, let's star, let's take care of all this information so it sticks in our brains forever. Right, so it says the formula for calculating the global growth rate is global population growth rate equals CBR over CDR over 10. Or CBR minus CDR over 10. It explains that the crude birth rate, which is CBR, crude birth rate, CBR is the number of births per 1,000 individuals per year. So I'm going to underline that definition. And it says the crude death rate, CDR, is the number of deaths per thousand individuals per year. <clears throat> the rate, this rate is expressed mathematically for a hypothetical population as global population growth rate equals CBR minus CDR over 10. So if a hypothetical country had a CBR of 20 and a CDR of 8, Okay, so 20 births per thousand and 8 deaths per thousand, then the growth rate would be 1.2%. All right. Then it says the formula for calculating a nation's growth rate is a little different. While nations experience immigration and emigration, the global population does not. We are all one global population. So our national population growth rate is CBR plus immigration minus CDR plus emigration divided by 10. Okay, now um, a couple of things we want to kind of star on our papers over here is immigration and emigration because that's what separates the national population growth rate from the global population growth rate. Okay, now um, as we remember from class, we remember that a nation is a country, so national population growth rate is going to refer to that of a country. Global is, of course, the whole world. And so far, we don't really have immigrants or emigrants of planet Earth, so that's why it's not included in the global population growth rate. All right? So this, if we're going to do a hypothetical, country X growth rate in 2007, um, 16 is going to be CBR. 6 is the immigration, 8 is CDR, and 0 is immigration over 10, which gives about 1.4. Now, we want to make sure that we're using our parentheses. Okay, the parentheses are very important, so I'm going to highlight them here with my red pen to make sure I remember that they're very important because if you do not put them in your calculator or you do not use the order of operations correctly, you're going to get an incorrect number. Okay, so we want to make sure that we get those done right. All right, our first actual question is called calculating population growth. So it says that New Zealand has a population of 4.3 million people, a TFR or total fertility rate. Let's write that down. TFR equals total fertility rate. just so we remember, a TFR of 2.1 and a net migration rate of 2 per thousand. How many people will New, De New Zealand gain next year as a result of immigration? If TFR stays the same for the next century and the net migration stays the same as well, when will the population of New Zealand double? So there's actually two questions in here. Um, how many people will New Zealand gain next year as a result of immigration and when will its population double. So let's highlight all the important parts here. So we know that it has a population of 4.3 million people. That's important. We know the TFR is 2.1. That's an important number. We know the net migration rate is 2 per thousand. And we want to um, underline our question here of how many people will New Zealand gain next year as a result of immigration. And then we know that TFR stays the same, and the net migration stays the same. 
This is part of the second question. When will the population of New Zealand double? So we want to know the doubling time. All right. So because the TFR isn't changing at all, we know that, put a little star note to ourselves, we know that only immigration will increase New Zealand's population. All right. So we, all, we already know that the only thing that's going to increase New Zealand's population is immigration. So what we want to do in this case is we want to set up a proportion that's going to tell us how many people are going to be added if the net migration rate is 2 per 1,000. Okay, so if the net migration rate is 2 over 1,000, okay, and that's my net migration rate, I want to know what it is for the whole country, so I'm going to put X over our country's total population, which is 4.3 million, which I can put in scientific notation as 4.3 times 10 to the 6th, okay? So that's going to be the overall population is 4.3 times 10 to the 6th. Now if I cross multiply, all right, and then I'm going to end up with x equals 8,600 people per year. So if we want to see that on the calculator, we can see, let's zoom out a little bit. If we want to see that on the calculator, we know that 2 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.002. And then we're going to multiply that times 4.3 times 10 to the 6. Now in order to do that, we need that little bitty E right here. In order to get this E, we have second N this double E. It might look a little bit different on your calculator, but it should be the same overall. Okay, so notice how this double E is different than this E that we've used before. We've used the E to the X before. We want to use the double uppercase E. Okay, and that gives me 8,600. All right. All right, so we know that 8,600 people per year are added by immigration. All right, so that's our final answer. So I'm going to highlight it. All right, zoom back in. All right, now what we want to find next is we want to find the growth rate. Okay, so I'm going to write, just going to separate it out here so I know which formulas I'm using every time. Okay, so I have my growth rate. That's my next question. And that's the only way I'm going to be able to find doubling time. So our question asks us, um, when will the population of New Zealand double? So far, I don't have my growth rate. So remember, our doubling time formula is going to be... Um, 70 over R, so doubling time equals 70 over R, which is our growth rate. Okay, so in order to find that, we need to figure out the growth rate first. Okay, I forgot to highlight these guys. So I have them all at the same time. Okay. 
So in order to do that, we're going to take the number of people that we're adding every year, dividing it by the total population, and multiplying by 100%. Okay, so we're going to take 88,600 people per year and divide it by 4.3 times 10 to the 6 people plus that people times 100% equals so let's find that on our calculator all right so we've got 86 100 divided by 4.3 times 10 to the 6th and that gives us 0 0.002 again okay times 100 percent to give us the growth rate as a percent and that's going to give us 0 0.2 percent all right now i'm not going to highlight it because it's not part of the question it's just going to help us answer this next part and so i'm going to write doubling time in order to separate growth rate from doubling time in my head mostly okay so we already know that doubling rate is 70 over r so that's going to be 70 divided by 0 0.2 okay and then on our calculator 70 divided by 0.2 is 350 years all right so 350 years is how long it will take for the population to double all right so we want to highlight our answer and let's move on now i have a few population practice problems that are kind of like those that might show up on the actual exam now usually on the exams they will use pretty simple numbers so that you won't have to worry about um, not using a calculator. But for our purposes, since I know you have a calculator available to you, we're going to use some, some different numbers, and that's okay. So I'm going to start doing these as, as quizzes on Schoology instead of the WSQ forms. So whenever you see the word quiz, know that that means that you're going to have to answer it yourself and it's actually a quiz question so what you'll do is you'll show your work here and get it stamped off and then you'll answer the question on the quiz after you find your answer okay so let's start with the first one it's going to be population density and it says that in 2000 there were 30 million seven hundred fifty thousand and eighty seven people living in canada which has a total area of 9,984,670 square kilometers. What is the population density of Canada? Okay, so our um, equation for population density, so population density equals the number of people divided by the area. Now, these Population density problems can be used for humans, they can be used for antelopes, they can be used for anything. So you might get a population density question about people or it might be about animals. It doesn't matter, it's always going to be the same. The number of people slash animals or plants or whatever, okay, over the area. So for our question, it says that we have 30 million seven hundred and fifty thousand and eighty seven people divided by nine million nine hundred eighty four thousand six hundred and seventy square kilometers okay so on my calculator I'm gonna get that let's see thirty thousand seven hundred and fifty zero eight seven divided by nine nine eight four six seven zero and that gives me three point one okay we want to round to the nearest hundredth usually so that's going to give me three point one people per square kilometer all right now i'm going to highlight that all right and it help 
if it helps you to highlight your question, because um, it definitely does does for me sometimes, we could highlight that there are 30 million people, area of this, and what is the population density is my question. Okay, so if that's something that works for you, absolutely go crazy. And then if you like to highlight all of your um, equations that you're going to use, here's a good one for population density. Okay, because you're going to need to use it in number two here about Dr. Evil. Okay, so that one's going to be on your own. All right, and next we have a growth rate question. So let's read that one together. It says in 1999, with a beginning population of 30,491,000 people, there were 335,500 births, 225,500 deaths, 205,711 immigrants, and 41,142 immigrants. What is the growth rate expressed as a percentage? Okay, so equation to kind of memorize for growth rate is going to be growth rate equals the change in population divided by the initial population times 100%. Okay, so another initial, another word for initial is going to be original. So it gave us to us, it gave that to us in the question. All right, now the reason that we know that you're going to have to use this equation instead of the one up here is because that the numbers that they gave you were not crude. So they didn't, they did not give you the crude birth rates and the crude death rates. So that's how you know you can't use the original equation that we learned earlier. Okay, so if we want to set this up, okay, we know that in order to find the change in population, we have to do births, wow, can't spell births, births plus immigrants minus deaths plus immigrants. Okay, I know we've done this equation before, um, but I just wanted to write it out one more time for you guys and be making sure just like before that our parentheses are in our calculators before we do that because the parentheses make a difference. All right? So with the numbers that they gave us, they say 335,500 plus 205711 minus 225500 plus 41142. Okay, we're going to take that whole thing divided by the original population of 30 million. 491,000. All right, so let's put it on our calculator real quick with our parentheses. Okay, so with our parentheses, we have 335,500 plus 205,711 minus 225,500 plus 41142 equals, okay? Then we're gonna go divided by, because that whole answer is gonna go divided by 30,491,000. Okay, then don't remember the 100% over here. Okay, so times 100. So the growth rate is 0.9%. Awesome. All right, now, 
if you don't have immigration or emigration, you're just going to leave it out of the equation, and you're just going to do births minus deaths. Okay, so you can do these kinds of questions with immigration and emigration or without. Depends upon what the question is asking, so make sure you annotate your question and make sure you understand what it's asking. Okay, so number four, it's going to be a quiz question. Number five, it's going to be a quiz question. Okay. And now next we have measuring your impact national footprint. So it says the following table shows the average per capita ecological footprint for the world as a whole and for several countries. It also gives population sizes in the area of usable or biologically productive land available in each case. So this is the amount of land that we can actually use as um, humans and as biotic organisms. Okay, the rest of it might be, you know, water or desolate area, unusable area. So we're going to use what, they, what they've given us here. So A says complete the table by calculating the land area that would be required for each population given its footprint and determine how large a deficit or surplus of usable land each region has per person. So let's talk about what that means. Okay. So first we are going to calculate the total footprint in millions of hectares. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the average footprint per person times the population to get the total footprint of the whole country, or in our case, the whole world. Okay, so we're going to take 2.7 times 6,800. Okay, now since this is in millions, and this is in millions, it's okay for us to not put the times 10 to the 6th, okay? And so if we use our calculator, it says 2.7 times 6,800, because it's 18,360. So 18,360 million hectares, okay? It's going to be our first answer. Now it wants us to calculate the deficit or surplus. So what that means is that if, um, if everyone in the world had the average footprint, which is 2.7 hectares per person, and everyone used that whole amount, we want to calculate from this number how many we are either in deficit or surplus. So we either have land left over, so that's going to be surplus is if we have leftover land because we haven't used it all. Deficit means we use too much. And I think that's going to make more sense once I actually do the calculations with you. Okay, so we're going to take the land that there's available, so the usable land that the world has, which is 11,400 million hectares minus the number that we calculated, so minus 18,360 million hectares. So on our calculator, it says 11,400 minus 18,360. That means that we have negative 6,960 million hectares, okay? So what that means for us is that we are using so much land in every single person's footprint that we have a deficit of 6,960 million hectares. So we are using too much by this number. All right, now part B, part B says that if the entire global population lived at the level of consumption found in the United States, it would require nine hectares per person times 6.8 billion people or 61.2 billion hectares. Given that there are only 11.4 billion usable hectares on Earth, calculate how many Earths would be required for the entire human population to live sustainably at the level of consumption of the United States. 
repeat the calculation for the other countries. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to use some dimensional analysis. So it tells us that the United States uses 9 hectares per person. All right, and we know that on Earth we have 11.4 times 10 to the 9th, which is billion. We have 11.4 times 10 to the 9th hectares. So that crosses that off. And we have 6.8 times 10 to the 9th people. So that crosses this off. Okay. And then all we're left with is how many Earths that we would need. Okay, so remember for um, dimensional analysis, we want to multiply across the top and divide the stuff that's on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to do 9 times 6.8 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, and then divide that by 11.4 times 10 to the 9th. And that gives us 5.37 Earths. Okay, so that's what we're going to write down. So we have 5.37 Earths. So if everyone lived like Americans do, we would need 5.37 Earths to sustain the entire population. Okay, so what your job is now is to do the same thing for um, Japan, China, and India. All right, and then the quiz is going to ask you to put those countries in order. And then the last question, a little short answer on your quiz, is going to be which do you think is more is a more reasonable measure of a country's environmental impact, whether the people in that country are living sustainably within their own borders or whether all of the people in the world could consume at the country's level. Okay, so that's kind of an opinion question. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And I'll see you on Monday.